Okay, so I'm working out of this book. I'm gonna be working this problem for you guys. First thing I'm gonna do is count our elements. If you notice here, I have an element one that's represented here, and I have an element two that's represented here. So I have a two element system. Next thing we need to do is count our equations. If you notice, I have this, one, two, and three equations here. So I have three of these guys. What does that mean? That means that I have a three by three matrix. So before I even start the problem, I know the size of this guy right here. So that's a pretty important first step. Next thing I need to do is I need to take my two element system, I need to add it up and come up with one global element system, a global element matrix. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's start on element one. This is element one, right? We're gonna start at force one here. That's right here. We're gonna go like this. Okay, so the first value you put in is K1 into your matrix. So this is our second value in our matrix. Now, let's move on to force two. Force two is represented here and here. So how do we do that? We do it like this. on this guy. Now we go on to force three. That's right here. If you notice, I haven't filled in this value or this value. So go ahead and put in your zeros where you need it. So now we have our global on matrix. This represents this entire system. The next thing we do is boundary conditions. If you notice, this is fixed to a wall, so it's zero, because it's a fixed end. Okay, so go ahead and put your zero in, and we're done with our boundary conditions. Next thing I do is, I'm gonna zero out the columns. So that's here. So, if you look at force one right here, it's represented here, you'd work it out like this. Okay, so you can see the first step was here, right? And then, if I look at force two, the first step is also here. If I look at force three, the first step is here. So you can see that this zero is really multiplied by this entire column here. So that's what I did here, I went ahead and did that. And that's kind of the idea here, right? This represents this column, this is this column, and so forth. Next thing I need to do is move my move my knowns to the left hand side. So U3, I know what that is, right? So this needs to come to this side of the equation. So how do you do that? Well if I were to look at force 2 right here, right? That would represent right here. How would you work that out? It would be like, it would be like this. Okay, so you can see that negative K2 and U3 are multiplied by one another, right? So when I move U3 to the other side here, this whole thing is going to come with it. So that's what I did here. Now if I look at force 3, right? would work out force 3 like this. Okay, so you can see these two are multiplied by one another. And when you move it to the other side of the equation, you get the negative of it. Okay, so we're done moving our knowns to the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and move our unknowns to the right-hand side. If you look at this, I don't know that value. I don't know that value, and I don't know that one either. So these are our unknowns. They need to come to this side of the equation. 
so let's start with F1. Let's go and take F1, let's move it to this side of the equation. How do we do that? Well, that's what I did here. And if you look at this guy right here, right, you'll notice that this is F1 is equal to all this other stuff. Right, so I moved it to the other side of the equation. And that's where that negative comes from. Now, let's go ahead and take F3 and let's move it to the other side. So you can see I did the exact same thing here. Okay, if you notice, you don't want any negatives here in our, in our unknowns, because that will give us a reverse answer in the calculator. So, let's distribute the negative ones out. So that's what I did here. And remember, this is associated with this column. This is with this column, and so forth, right? Next thing I need to do, I need, if you notice I have one more unknown, F2 needs to come to the other side of the equation. So how do we do that? Well, I did that right here. Whenever you bring F2 to the other side, you need to create a new column here. So remember, this goes with this, right? All these columns are associated with each other. So same thing here, move your negative one out. So now I have this guy. So I had now have my global O matrix. If you notice I have all my unknowns over here, and I have all my known values over here. Okay, so if I were to work this out, how would I do it, right? This is F1. It would be like this. Right? And you would get this. Last one. So you can see the pattern. So I have my system of equations here.